Hello guys, welcome again to another exciting video about gout. Now, what is gout? What are the causes of gout? And what are the conditions that uh, predispose us to gout? And finally, does dietary protein cause gout? Because that is where the misconception is. Most people know that a high consumption of dietary protein will lead you to formation of uric acid then this will crystallize and uh, precipitate in your joints and then cause this pain and inflammation in your joints now that is one misconception that we, will have, we are about to change from this video so welcome and let's get to learn so what is gout gout is basically an inflammatory condition of the joints and causes a lot of pain in your joints and this is this gout comes from uh, basically accumulation of uric acid in your blood in your blood system eh? so when you have a high content of uric acid in your blood then this uric acid will uh, precipitate in your joints and then uh, those crystals will start causing you pain in the joints so basically your shoulders your your hip your wrists and then even your your, your appendages the extremities so basically that is gout now where does uric acid come from because now this is what will expose you to gout. Where do we source it from? Now, uric acid comes from uh, is, a, is, is a byproduct of uh, breakdown of proteins. So basically, when you break down proteins, you get purines. Now, when you break down these purines, uh, the end product will be uric acid. Okay. So basically, you're supposed to form urea and then excrete it through urine. But now you form uric acid, and this uric acid uh, starts to accumulate in your bloodstream. And then uh, it will crystallize and precipitate in your joints and that will bring about gout so the major question for today is how does gout form we already answered that now does dietary uh, protein cause gout that is the major point for today and that's what we will answer in this video now purines are high in uh, seafoods in organ meat and even chicken and turkey so that's where you source your purines from. So once you consume these uh, three types of foods, and then you get these purines. Okay? And then, so these purines are the ones that are broken down to give you uric acid. Uh, and it increases in your blood, then precipitates itself to form gout in your joints. Now, facts about uh, this process. Now, 60% of uric acid is formed by your own body. So basically, it's endogenous. Our own bodies uh, form uric acid endogenously. Number two, a third of uric acid or a third of these purines that you get uric acid from, they come from diet, which means a very small percentage of uric acid comes from diet. Now, the major part is formed by the body. That is fact number one. So put that behind your mind. So when you start handling uh, uh, the breakdown of uric acid and the excretion, then you'll get to understand uh, that one. Now, when uh, you get gout or when you're diagnosed with gout, the first thing they tell you is you quit meat and start being a vegan. You eat high content of vegetables but do not eat meat because in their thoughts, they know that when you eat meat, you'll get purines and you'll get gout. Now, you become a vegan and you put on all these uh, drugs that are supposed to help you heal the inflammation and also uh, help you ex eliminate the gout, the uric acid in your blood so that you recover from gout. But you still experience the same symptoms of gout. And the reason is, dietary protein does not cause gout. What causes gout is basically a problem in the kidneys. So a kidney problem is will, will, will precipitate you to getting gout. Now, how? 90% of problems of gout come as a result of a problem in elimination of the already formed uric acid. Now, uric acid is eliminated by the kidneys. So 90% of these problems come as a result of a problem in elimination. Only 10% come as a, a result of a problem in accumulation of uric acid. So basically, that explains where the problem is. The problem is not the accumulating uric acid. The problem is the elimination of this forming, uh, this uric acid that is being formed. And its elimination is through the kidneys. 
And now, your kidneys are, 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 are the ones that are responsible for, for this elimination. Yet, if they have a problem, then uric acid starts to build up in your bloodstream. Now, the kidney is affected by different conditions. And the number one list on that condition of, the, of diseases that, or conditions that affect the kidney is diabetic mellitus, diabetes mellitus. Now, DM type 2, for that matter, we said it affects different organs in the body, but the major ones are the eye, which it causes uh, blindness, and that is retinopathy. And then the brain and the nerves, which is called uh, neuropathy. And then the kidneys. It affects the nephrons in the kidneys to cause nephropathy. Now, if you are diabetic, then that means you will have a kidney problem. Once you have a kidney problem, then you will have a problem in elimination of uric acid. Now, this problem in elimination of uric acid will cause a buildup of uric acid in your bloodstream. And then this uric acid is the one that will precipitate in your joints and cause you gout. So when you start stopping uh, the, 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 the uric acid, uh, you start stopping the formation of uric acid or you, you, you block the intake of protein, hoping that you will stop the buildup of uric acid in the blood, that is wrong. If you have functional kidneys, then this uric acid will be eliminated through the kidneys. But if your kidneys are dysfunctional, even with the least amount of uric acid in your system, it will accumulate in blood and then it will cause you gout. So basically, sugar is the one that causes kidney problem. So high consumption of sugar and uh, simple carbohydrates, junk food, uh, seed oils, wheat products and all this stuff will expose you to insulin resistance. Now insulin resistance destroys endothelial blood vessels that even supply your kidneys and all other organs. Now, once you destroy supply of blood to the kidneys, then the kidney starts having problems with uh, ne 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 necrosis. So, because it's a tissue and it's, it's an organ made up of tissues, so once you deny it oxygen and supply of nutrients, then the tissue starts to, uh, to have these problems of necrosis. Now, once you alter that, then you get the insulin resistance brings you to diabetic mellitus. Diabetes mellitus then brings you to kidney damage. Then kidney damage accumulates uric acid because you're not eliminating it. And then this uric acid will cause you gout. So basically, our major problem is in sugar and not in protein. So most of the times we tend to blame, to blame other uh, foodstuffs or other nutrients for the problem that is caused by sugar. So now in gout, proteins have carried the burden of, uh, of sugar. And everybody has been uh, uh, made to believe that proteins are the ones that make you get uh, these inflammatory conditions. But in real sense, sugar is the one that causes these problems. And the worst sugar has to be fructose. Fructose is found highly in uh, adulterated fruits. Modern fruits are high in sugar, and this sugar is fructose. Modern honey is high in fructose. And this and those energy drinks and juices, the Ribena, the leucosate, they are high in fructose. And this fructose is the one that will cause a liver problem and then also a kidney problem through diabetes and fatty liver. Then after that, then you get accumulation of uric acid because you cannot eliminate it. So what do you do when you have gout? It is as simple as this. Now, before I even go to that, remember when you, you start uh, eating healthy keto diets, healthy keto diets, and also when you start fasting, there will be an, an increase or an, uh, an accumulation of uric acid in your system. Now ask yourself the question, why do we have an increase or an accumulation of uric acid in blood even though we are not eating, even though we are not consuming proteins? That tells you there must be another mechanism that brings out uric acid in your system. And that's why I tell you 90%, 60% sorry, of uric acid is endogenous. So you don't need it from diet. It is made by the, your own body. So what do you do when you have gout now? Now number one is fasting. Now, fasting and healthy keto diets go hand in hand. When you start healthy keto diets, you need to uh, accompany it by intermittent fasting and also uh, prolonged uh, periodic fasts. Now, when you fast, you realize that uric acid will go up in the beginning when you start this keto diet. So in the beginning, uric acid will, will go up. Now, if it goes up, that is not a problem. Why? Because this is a transition step from unhealthy living to healthy living, which means uh, the body is trying to adapt. Remember, uric acid is not a problem in the system. 
uric acid can act has several uh, benefits also in your system immunity it also uh, acts as an antioxidant a major antioxidant in your blood so it it is supposed to clear toxins and that's why when you're fasting and when you're exercising keto uric acid will go up because it is now trying to help you as an, an antioxidant to clear toxins in your system and therefore it's not necessarily that it's a bad thing it's helpful to you now so when you're practicing keto when you start keto and, and fasting you will experience an, a spike in, uh, in, in, in uric acid in your, in your blood. And that is just normal. It will revert back to normal because this is adaptation. So with time, it goes back to, to normal because your kidneys now can handle it. So healthy keto and fasting. That is the first thing, uh, the first therapy in management of gout. Number two, you have to fix the M and uh, insulin resistance. So you must lose weight. You must start eating healthy so that you reverse insulin resistance. Your insulin sensitivity goes back to normal. And then your, 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 your sugars are normalized. And you clean, you're, you're clean or you're free from diabetes. And then your kidneys start to heal. Once your kidneys normalize, then you eliminate uric acid. And you recover from gout. And then if at all these symptoms are worse and your body is turning into uh, acidosis or, 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 or the kidney have totally uh, a huge problem, then you can utilize potassium citrate. Potassium citrate is, uh, will alkanize your urine, will make your urine basic. And once you make urine basic, that means you will eliminate acids from the body. And then your body will recover. So basically those are what you're supposed to do. But majorly concentrate on eliminating diabetes mellitus and keto diets. And keto diets, you say, high fat content, moderate protein, and almost or near zero carbohydrates so basically that is how you recover from gout and then ignore the myth that dietary proteins cause gout they don't eat your protein